Okay, so, hey y'all. Hi. Hey. Ah, we are back for a quickie. I love a quickie. This is. I mean, do you? There's, um, those are, I mean, that's the only type I like. Okay, just making Quickies. sure. Like, just making sure. Tell me, sure. like, give me the meat and potatoes. Let's go. Okay, just give me the meat. Or. <laughs> Even better. Bon, I need some bon. papas every once in a while. So I'll take some meat and potatoes. Okay. All Caroline right. Caroline wants the sausage. Yeah. Give me some of that sausage. Well, I'm going to give you a whole lot of sausage today. Okay. Well, actually, give it to me. it's a little bitty sausage. Oh. Yeah. So. Uh, you know, I'm not opposed. So it's Thirsty Thursday and um, me and Caroline are in the studio. You hear you hear a little bit of ice, so every once in a while you hear the, some crunching of some ice, and that's just our sound effect, so just... Yeah. Uh, we love to provide that for you. Yeah. Anything good happening? Um, Let's see. I feel like I'm about to go dog sit at uh, somebody's house this weekend, slash house sit, but you know when it's a really nice house and I get to just lay by the pool all weekend, I am okay with it. Okay. I have like 18 jobs. Oh. So I'm so rich. Yeah. Real rich. <laughs> Real rich. I'm a rich bitch. Well, you know, my kid's about to come home from college. Oh. And I'm semi-excited. I'm ex- so ex- Like, I love my kid. I'm so excited about him coming home. But I haven't, he hasn't been there consistently in like a year. So he's lived the good life of a college student to where... I mean, we're probably going to be arguing a whole lot. So well, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm having to pray about it. I'll pray about it and too. And he was just like, Mama, I'm coming. So get ready because I'm about to rock your world. Oh. So he have, does he have like a girlfriend or like what's his situation? Oh, he don't believe in him. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no. So there's that. But that's he my baby. Come. I love him. Trent Ave. I've made him. I was like, Trenton, I think you're real famous, so you should share all of our Twitters and all of our Instagrams. Oh, for sure. And you know what he told me? He was like, when I see some money behind some oh, BHH. Hey. And then he called it BHH. What's B- When I see some BHH Bl- money, B- I might share. Bloody, Bloody happy oh, hour. Nur. Y'all, this quickie is about, I went all the way to Japan. Oh, mm-hmm. you went traveling. I skipped over all the states and in the United. Continents and... Uh-huh, the... and went straight to Japan. Okay. And never been let there. me tell you, this is legit horrible. I can't wait. Horrible? I mean, okay. Horrible. Yep. So, take a shot. At good. home, take a shot. Because this man is a kid killer. His name is Sutomu Miyazaki. I'm oh, putting on my sunglasses. Caroline put on her her her, her, her sunglasses. <laughs> yep. Sutomu. And butt. guess what? I'm gonna butcher his damn name, but he does not deserve respect on his name at all. He does no. not deserve the respect. No. So let me tell you a little bit of bio about Sutomu because I feel like you gotta know where they started to see where they ended. Okay. So. He was born a premature kid in Tokyo in August of 1962, mm-hmm. okay? And he only weighed four pounds. How many? Four? Four pounds. He was premature. Oh, dang. Um, And he had a deformity when he was born. Oh, my God, Caroline. I posted the photo what? on um, f- whatever it's called, Instagram, Facebook. You, but you did? Of this guy? Of Sutomo's Tuki? I mean, yeah, when we... Did I say his name? Yeah, I posted it. Oh, yeah. In the future. Uh, oh, yeah, I, I forgot. posted it in the I future, forgot. right? Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. his hands look like Slender Man's hands. Oh, he- not like, Slender Man? They are Ooh, like 10 that's inches not good. long. His joints were fused together. And... um, Was there like incest happening or like what? Why, why was he just... Guess that- what? What? There was. He was a child of incest. Ah! Oh, my goodness. I screamed so loud like I saw a scary person, but yeah. I just got excited. And you I even got your cheerleader it. hands up. I know. 
So, so his daddy was his daddy. His daddy his was his daddy. daddy <laughs> got his what would be his older sister pregnant. <gasps> so uh, then his daughter? His dad His, his daddy his... screwed his daughter, got her pregnant, and then Sutomu was oh. born. So his mama was also his sister. So he starts off pretty shitty, right? Well, I but this say. ain't it his fault. <laughs> yeah. So it's mama, sister mama. Sister mom. He is a child of of um what's it called again? Incest. Incest. And he had that deformity, right? But there's also another deformity that kids that he went to high school with and was in PE and showered in the locker room with said that he had. But there's no pictures of this. There's pictures of the shitty hands. The weedle deedle. He had, had a dang literally a pencil dick. Oh so there were reports that there the size was the girth of a pencil and the lint was no bigger than a toothpick. So it was kind of like a vagina. Uh, I don't. It could have been like half and I half. Mean, my vagina does not look like that. <laughs> of course he was shamed of himself, right? You got these deformities. And even if nobody else sees this, what's under your pants, you see it every single day. So... Um, he was ashamed of himself and his, his family was ashamed of him and probably like his dad had no relationship I would have been with him. Of it too. Probably because he knew like how he came about. So um his teachers remembered him as a loner and he basically made it impossible for him to have former relationship and he was often bullied pretty bad. Mm. So you almost feel bad. Like he didn't ask to, you know, for his mama to be his sister or his sister to be his mama and his daddy to be his daddy and his <laughs> and his daddy like twice. Um, and so his dad, like many Japanese men back then, uh, was very um, popular in the community and he owned this newspaper business. So he's pretty successful, but a workaholic. So he's never there. So he's always at home with his sister mama. And his other sisters, and they did not like him. Mm -mm. But he had one relationship in life that was genuine, and that was his pawpaw. Okay. And so pawpaw showed him good, showed him good, genuine love. And well, that's good because I know, you know he, somebody he, you got to have a little bit of something he, somewhere. He's obviously not set up for success. Let me tell you how I found out about. Okay, this. let me tell you that. Every time I look, research these ser murderers or serial killers, they're like, oh, we found evidence. Oh, we found all these serial killer books. Oh, yeah, we found all these books. And then I'm like, um, April has all these books. Got them all. So she's a murderer. Okay, bye. Let me tell you why I got this book. So my mom, oh! my mom got me this book, okay? And I was like, mom, I've never seen this book. I love it. So it's called The Ten... Were serial killers, monsters whose crimes shocked the world. If you open it up, it says TDJC approved, Texas Department of Criminal Justice approved. So no, my mom is not an inmate. Even though she named all your brothers after her. Brothers. I mean, yes. Yeah, so she is a little sus. <laughs> so I have this amazing book by Victor McQueen. McQueen. And it's TG, TDJC approved. And so, we got, we got, we got, do you want to post that one on Instagram too? Oh, we sure will. Okay. Right and next to Taramasu Masaki. Taramasu. So, Taramasu, actually, back to the story, okay? Okay. One time in his whole life, he made his mom and dad, his family, a little bit proud for like five seconds. Okay. He was in junior high. I think and I've done that before. He was entered high school early because he was real smart so he didn't have any like intellectual disabilities he basically skipped a grade and got to go to high school real early and his family was really proud because this high school that he went to those kids usually go to these prestigious universities mm -hmm. so you know education's real important there okay in japan so he started going to the school and he had to commute there but he just really went into it you know what he was into Mm, trying to figure out why he had such a small penis. Comic books <laughs> and Japanese 
anime. Okay. Okay. Well, yeah, I was good. That was my second guess. Uh, oh, that was your second one? Yeah, that was okay. my second guess. Well, anime. And so he, like, dove into it. He had no friends, right? So he spent all his time in this comic, in these comics, in this anime. Mm-hmm. He went from being top 10% to 40 out of 56. So, basically, he was a real winner and did not go to a big university. He went to a junior college, okay. which in Japan, and according to his parents, is good reason to ignore your kid. Oh, no. So, if he was not alienated before, he, he definitely, definitely was, was now. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah, yeah. So, he's a Juco. And Mm -hmm. he is basically a victim, and he hates everything. Like, he um, has no friends still in college. No, like, there's not one documented friend. And he became a perv times 10 when he got his photography technician certification. He was going to the malls, and he was like, hey, girl, I'm going to take a picture. Hey, you want to be a model? Because that's what they do? That's what Jeffrey Dahmer did. Uh-huh. Well, he went to gay bars. But, no, he was even lower than that. He just took random pics of girls' crotches. Oh, well, I and was going to say, that's that what nice. I would do. Yep. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, and then he would, like, make dirty comments all the time, kind of like we do. But yeah. we're not gross. Yeah, and so no, we're normal. People <laughs> we're so hated normal. his comments. Oh, people love ours. <clears throat> so his life was so shitty that he contemplated suicide, which none of this is still his fault. So I'm talking real shitty about him, and he's basically still a kid that was dealt some bad cards. Okay, but I, he didn't I, I, commit. Yeah. A, he didn't commit suicide, which if he did, he would have done the world a big favor. But he didn't. Mm-mm. And um, so he just dove even further into these comics. Paul Paul, who is his only love in the life, right? The only person in the world that showed him any love, Mm -hmm. died in May of 1988. And at this time, Tiramisu, or Sutomo, Sutomo, was 25 years old. And he missed his grandpa. Like, everybody misses their grandpa or grandma when they die, right? Yeah. But he missed them to a point to where he wanted them to be, he wanted grandpa to be reincarnated. Okay. And he was Buddhist, so I think that religion, like, allows for that, like, it can happen, like, when you believe in that religion, or they think it can happen. So, guess what he thought was going to bring his back, dad Um, back to life? Guess what he did? Tell me. He ate his dad's ashes. Oh, I was going to guess that. I mean, that's probably what I would have done. I would. I did that, actually. Okay. Okay. (laughs) Well, he ate his dad's ashes, and he ate little by little, and he just knew that when he ate all the ashes. I love to eat ashes. That that sounds so (laughs) good. It's. There was a show How would you eat it if you did it? Would you mix it in your drink? I would have to just, like, put it on my tongue and, and, like, take a shot. No, you would choke. You'd be like... (laughs) Like you would choke, it would like clog. So you'd have to mix it up. Yeah, I'd mix it with my alcohol. Yeah, you couldn't just like pour ashes. It's like when you ha- take oh, that BT I mean, B twelve BC powder. Oh yeah. When you have a real bad hangover, and you gotta take that BC powder, and you're like, <sighs> oh well. That's exactly how it. Ha- <sighs> I actually. Do you may do that one more time? <sighs> mm, thank okay. you for the sound effects. You're welcome. That's probably how he sounded when he ate <sighs> all of his dad's ashes. And then, I mean, not his dad, his grandpa, and then his dad was not reincarnated. So he was a little pissed about that. I'd be pissed. So instead of working on having his grandpa reincarnated, he had a birthday, turned 26, and picked up a little girl. Mm. But by this time, he was into this anime called Lolly Con. Oh. So Lollycon is basically these cartoons, but about girls that are prepubescent. Pubescent. Yes. So basically little girl child porn. Oh, no. Anime, comic, cartoon type shit. This was totally legal in Japan. You could um, possess it. You could film it. You could do all this stuff. So it was not normal, but normal. Okay. It's not normal. So, if he wasn't 
reading the comics or watching the shit, he was drawing them with his nasty ass hands. I don't even know how you could hold a pencil. <laughs> so with his ding dong and, yuck. In August of 1988, he turned 26, and on his way home in his shitty Nissan Langley, never even heard of that type Langley. of car. Langley. Get out of here, Langley. He Dangly saw Langley. a little Can girl. we call him Dangly Langley? Dangly Langley. <laughs> there we go. Dangly Langley offered a ride to this four-year-old girl named Mary Kono. <sighs> Don't name Mary or Mari. I know that was your first victim. Yep, it was. My Sorry. mom's name's Mary. Uh oh. But we call her Mosey, so it's fine. Like Ma- Mary Rose Mosey. Well, he went up to this little girl and he told her, Wouldn't you like to go someplace cool? And so she's four years old and she's at the park by herself. I know. I can't even. But listen, before you judge, there was literally no crime in Japan and Tokyo back then. Okay, but how's a four-year-old going to go to the park by themselves? I, I don't even. I'm just like. Oh, hey, did, bye. Did, go ahead. Go across the street. Go over there to the park and go swing. 1,400 and then rocks. Yeah. Like, or get hit by a car. You're four. But this is normal because you'll see. Go to the splash pad. Okay, you're four. But bye. maybe because they're Japanese, they're really like 12-year-olds because they're so smart. Oh, that's true. Maybe. I don't yeah. know. So I'm offended. She agreed to go to some place cool with him, and she grabbed his nasty hands. I need you to Google what his hands look like again, so um, you can be staring. Ter- at I don't him. know how to spell tiramisu chishaki. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I already it's, found it. It's okay. fine. So they drove almost an hour away to this popular park and hiking and biking trail. I'm picturing Cameron Park trails. So they basically drove to the camera park of Tokyo. For sure. And he got out and he walked the little girl and they went down this trail and to the secluded place. And there is when he wrapped those slender man hands around her neck, strangling her. Then he sexually assaults her lifeless body. Oh. The whole time he's taken pictures. Before, during, after. They. Oh. April, those look like my hands. No. <laughs> I'm telling Linky. Before, so that's fine. during, and after, he has taken pictures of this whole thing. Oh. And then he leaves her body in the woods and balls up her clothes and leaves. So he is a pedophile, a murder, murderer, and a necrophiliac. You, can you get any lower? I no. He does. So, oh, no. Wait for it. So oh, about the time, literally, that he's killing her, about the time of death, her father noticed she's missing. So this is an hour or more later, right? He calls the police and files a report, but this does not happen in Japan. Like, there's no crime. There's never any missing kids. Really? It just doesn't happen. So... They don't know what to do. Like, there's no protocol for missing kids. There's not, like, an Amber Alert. There's, like, nothing. She, I mean, this is 1988, so Amber Alert wasn't born then. But, so what they did is they made 50,000 posters of her missing child, and they posted them all over Japan. It was massive. And, of course, it was all over the news because... Shit like this did not happen. Uh Uh-uh. Okay? Oh, my. uh, Mari's mom went public about her missing daughter, and she was asking for help to bring her daughter home. And guess who saw the mom? Who? Tiramisu. Tiramisu. He was watching the news, and the next day he put a postcard in the mail. Uh -uh. Uh Uh-uh. Uh-uh. And said, (laughs) in all caps, there are devils a boot about a boot. <laughs> um, he's not from Canada he's from Japan there are devils about there are devils wearing boots <laughs> <laughs> her body was not found and by September the case was at a standstill like they had nothing to go on okay, oh, okay. so this just made tiramisu <laughs> really on top of the world and he was thirsty and he was hungry so by October 3rd he found another little girl she was 7 and her name was Masami Yoshizawa 
Oh, thank you. I used to live in Japan. You did so good. You are you Japanese? I am probably half. Okay. So he too lured her into the car, and she met the same fate as Mari. Only a hundred yards away from where Mari was dumped, he strangled what Masami obsessively took photos of her and his crime scene, and he has sexually assaulted her body. Post mortem oh, necrophilia. Oh, why do you keep doing all these people with necrophilia? I might be obsessed with it. Oh, well, it is. So. He fled the scene because she got some muscle spasms and her body became, but started to twitch. Oh, he later shit. tells this. So he took off. Don't laugh at that. Well, no, I mean, <laughs> if you're like, scary. Yeah. if I was having, it's if shit. I like saw a dead body and then it started like twitching. Yeah. That would creep me out. <laughs> so what did the police do? They stepped up their game a little bit. They put out the five fifty thousand posters again on now Masami, and now they went to house to house, made, started knocking on doors and handing posters, and then asking, "Do you know anything about this?" So basically, they weren't experienced, right? And the one bad thing about having a low crime rate is like your police don't know what to do when there is an actual crime. They knew that these incidents were linked, right? But they had no evidence, no suspects, and literally nothing to investigate. And so all they had was two missing sweet baby girls. Mm. So December, he took a longer break this time. So he is like a little dormant period, but not too long. We'll find out in a minute why he has these periods. So. On the third murder, this was December, so he started in August, had a October, now it's December, he saw four-year-old Erica Namba, and he wasted no time with her. Like, he didn't even try to convince her, he just basically snatched her up, threw her in the car, and he started to make her strip while he took pictures. I should never know what that is. Oh, he eventually strangled and assaulted her and wrapped her body in a tiny sheet and placed her in his trunk of the car, then later dumped her and her clothes in the woods, right? But this dumbass got his shitty Nissan Langley stuck in the woods. <laughs> like, it was, like, stuck mm. in a ditch. And some guys saw him, and they pulled over, and they pull over to help him, <sighs> okay? And um, they pushed him out of whatever he was stuck in, and... He drove off like he didn't say thank you. He didn't say anything. So they were just like, oh, he's an ass. And mm -hmm. they just went about their business, right? But the next day, this nature facility worker finds Erica's clothes. And she calls the police because there's a trillion posters posted up, right? Mm -hmm. And so the police come and they find Erica's body way far away from where the clothes are found. And when that hit the news, the men that helped Tiramisu get out, they called the police and they said, we were there. We were in this exact spot and we helped a guy. His car was stuck. <sighs> Let me tell you. Oh. Sutomu could have been caught right here. Had these men paid better attention. So instead of telling them they helped a guy who drives a Nissan Langley out, they said they helped a guy that drives a Toyota Corolla oh, out. Oh, no. Uh, that is the most common car in Japan at this time. <laughs> um, and so then the police spend time and time and hours and hours, and these men are going through photos and owners of about 6,000 Toyota Corolla owners. Mm -mm. He drives a Nissan. Mm -mm. So everybody's idiot. Yep. Literally. They done did it. I, they're supposed to be way smarter than this. Well, they're not used to it, I guess. And they're not used to, well, I mean, they have murderers, right? Just, so, yeah, they're not used to it. They're just, they're just, they're not on the head swivel like we are all time. <laughs> Looking at Lass's plates in everybody's car. I got everybody's memorized. <laughs> you got everybody. <laughs> She's always searching. 
<laughs> always looking for a criminal. So instead of him going to jail at this time, he just gets to continue to live his horrible life, mm-hmm. pathetic life. So he gets bored and he's not kidnapping anybody right now. He is making contact with the family of the kids that he kidnaps. <gasps> what? So he, the families begin to get these mysterious phone calls. So he knows what he's doing. Like he's not just like. He ain't crazy. Oh, he is not crazy. For so he would call them. He would, they would pick up the phone, but he wouldn't speak. Mm-hmm. And then if they didn't pick up the phone, he would let the phone ring for up to 20 minutes straight. So he was torturing them, but he didn't stop at the phone calls. So Erica, the four-year-old, her father received postcards every week like clockwork. And the postcard said, Erica, cold, cough, <gasps> throat, <gasps> breast, death she's four years old oh. erica period cold period cough period throat period death uh-uh. period no. every week wow. but that wasn't even the worst of it for mari mary's father he was going to work one day and on the front porch there was a box and so it turns out that um suno tusomu sunomu tiramisu whatever his name is um, would go back and visit his crime scene. So that's very common, common. right? Yeah, yeah, Very yeah. common. But on one of his visits, he cuts off the hands and feet of sweet little Mary, and he kept them as souvenirs and burned the rest of her body. So in that box that's on Mary's daddy's porch are her ashes, <laughs> 10 of her baby teeth, and pictures of the clothing that she wore that day. Oh, what? So her mom and dad... <gasps> Um, were, of course, devastated. Mm. And they called the police immediately. And the police come out and they take the stuff to this dental, quote unquote, expert that works at a local university. And the dental expert checks it out and then went, did a press conference and says, the, ten ne- the teeth do not belong to <gasps> Mary. So, like any hopeful parents, they are happy. And then so they go into the press conference and they're expressing this hope for their child to be alive and help and all this stuff, right? Mm. Well, Sunomu's not doing shit else but reading comics and watching this. So he immediately starts writing this three-page letter called Crime Confession. Oh, my. And he detailed and confessed to killing Mary and all the other girls, right? So there's three total. And he said he did not want the mom to have false hope. And that's why he's writing this letter. Oh, like, he don't okay. want the mom to think that she's alive when he knows he killed her. Yeah. He signs the letter, Yoku Amada, which means, now I have the courage and now I will tell. Oh, so nice. About so it. then guess what this bullshit ass dental expert does? Oh, Lord, I don't even. He reneges and he says, <gasps> "Just joking." It really is. It is. <gasps> this is Mary. Oh, Sorry, shit. I looked at the wrong teeth. <laughs> like, ha- like I don't even know. I don't oh, even God. know. So, the good thing is, or you would think, the police now have all these things to investigate. They have a box. They have pictures. They have teeth. They have ashes. They have. A letter with handwriting. Yeah. I mean, so, they got yeah. plenty of so evidence. So they pretend like they're police for a little bit, and they pull in a handwriting expert that yields nothing. Mm. And then they look at the type of camera who takes these pictures, and they said, oh, this isn't just like your Kodak. Caroline's too young to know what Kodak is. <laughs> I bet <bet-ya>. you. <laughs> and they said, this is a professional camera. This box is a special box. This is printed at a certain print shop, right? What would you do if you're a police? Would you go investigate all those things? Probably. And maybe try to figure out who has this type of camera in the area? I mean, I would think, yeah. yeah. Oh, well. No, no, not in Japan. You know what they did? Mm, they went to just sleep, took a nap. made copies of the three-page confession letters and went door-to-door again. 
I mean, because that worked before, right? Yeah, sure did. So now they're showing people these this letter and just basically saying, "Do you recognize this handwriting of this creepy hand criminal?" I mean, so that went nowhere. I wouldn't and recognize Mari's- your handwriting. I mean, like, <laughs> let's be honest. Who? Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Mari's parents had to bury. She. They at least had something to bury. So they had a little bit of closure, and they buried her ashes and her teeth. And they went on the news and pleaded for the killer to bring back her hands and feet. Because I guess Buddhists, the reason was so she can walk and eat in heaven. So I guess if you, in the Buddhist religion, how you die is how you are in the afterlife. Oh. Um, and so they're thinking maybe she gets to go to the afterlife now, but she can't eat because she don't have any hands and she can't walk. She don't oh. have any feet. So... This just made Sutomu write some damn letters to his to them. Okay. Oh, no. And so then he gets bored with torturing them. So he gets more victims. So by June, he skips work and he finds a girl and he persuades her to take off her underwear while he takes pictures. But a neighbor came and saw him and chased his ass down. But he got away. Oh in the woods. And he got away. Oh, he used those Later hands like bear back. crawl and stuff. Yeah. Only to come back and he abducts a five-year-old girl named oh. Ayako Nemoto. So he strangled her, wraps her in the sheet. This is when he hits a haul time low. He puts her in his car and drives him back to her, drives her back to his apartment where he got out his video camera this time. Oh my so gosh. instead of taking pictures, he's videoing himself sexually abusing this little girl and over the next two days he keeps her body there and abuses her um then he hacks off her hands and her feet and her head he later says so that they couldn't identify her he dumps the torso in a restroom like behind a restroom in a cemetery and he went back to his house to roast his the hands and the feet and he ate part of her flesh oh Hell. I should have known you were going to go there with these. I things. mean, yeah. You can't. That's why he's in this top 10. Yeah. Like yeah, literally. Yeah, yeah, that's, that ain't good. Mm-mm. He is now not just a murdering cunt, necrophiliac, pedophile. Hey, cunt. He is Did also. You say cunt? Cunt. <laughs> he is also a cannibal. Special place for him. Yeah, he burning. And I don't know if Buddhists believe in this special place. We do. Uh, we do. So we're going to put him there. So when he got back home, he starts like hiding the evidence. Like he burns the sheet. He hid the remains that he had there. So the, the rest of the hands and the feet and the head around his house. And police find the torso and later identify that it's Ayako by the contents in her stomach. So they asked the parents what was her last meal, basically, and you can identify the contents. Water burger. It was probably not water burger. Oh, no. So um, he feels on top of the world. He's relentless and he's hungry. And by the end of July, he found two this time. So he thinks he hits the jackpot. Two little sisters. Oh, and my he makes one start stripping. But the other one gets away and she goes and gets daddy. Mm. Hello, daddy. Yes. Daddy comes and finds Tiramisu mm. and the little girl. And he whoops <gasps> Sutomu's ass. But he like is an athlete in some way because he gets away again. And instead of the dad chasing him down, like he's ca- he's helping his little girl who is half naked and is uh, yeah. traumatized, oh, right? Man. Calls the police, and the police come, and they got, like, barricades around the parking lot. They got the car surrounded, but they're not really doing nothing else. And then somebody starts walking up from the woods. It's Suto- Sutomu. Tiramisu coming up from the woods. He wanted his hot. car. Oh, I'm sure he did. So they arrested him, and he got put in jail. So... Cops again did not even have to do any work. Oh, he just walked in. So that kind of made Gosh. me think that he wanted to get caught because you literally like, could have yeah. got away. So he wanted to get caught, or he knew it was going to get caught anyways because they had his car. So when they f- they got him, 
and they arrested him and they went to his house where he had 5,763 videos of child porn, that what? lollycon anime, and 500 of those videos were of his sisters, naked sisters, <gasps> throughout their life. Like he the fu- was born nasty, just nasty. The rest were just random child porn videos and videos of him screwing dead corpses um, and of the little girls that he abducted. And then, like, the other, it was, like, hundreds of, like, comic books and stuff like that. So that's when he was coined the otaku killer. And in Japan, that's just basically, like, the nerdy losers of life. Like, they don't do sh- anything with their life. They sit at home. They engage in things that like not the normal population would and his is like anime and child porn so otaku killer right in jail he confessed to everything like he did not hold back very detailed and Mm. he just kept asking about his comics and his car it's all he was worried about where about where's my car where's my comics Mm -hmm. so his family remember he has a family just like every murderer does they fled the country and they disowned him and of course refused to pay for a lawyer like they should and later on his dad has guilt and just admitted that he should have paid attention to his son's early you probably shouldn't have had sex with your sister i mean start off there <laughs> don't screw your daughter and then if your kid is taking pictures <laughs> of the sister don't ignore it or videos like be the first sign so he said that he ignored a lot of antisocial behavior when he was younger and he like did a public apology and oh then, thanks we appreciate oh, that everything's fixed mm, right sorry bye after this public apology he threw himself off a bridge into the river probably in 1994 <laughs> and when they oh met, that's recent like mm-hmm. this is okay so he had been in jail for a while, right? So when they told Sutomu that his dad did that, he goes, oh, I feel refreshed. Oh. So he had he a did. lot of hatred towards mm-hmm. his dad, which yeah. he probably should. You can't get mad at him for that. His dad, like, basically ignored him. Mm, well, I'm kind of mad at him for his whole everything. So. so he's in prison, and he sits there while the system basically argues, like, is he competent enough to stand trial? Because the question is, is this guy crazy? Or is he, like, is he mentally insane or is he not? So, um, basically, they have three options. They can say he's not responsible and he's insane and he goes to a mental institution. Mm. They can give him 12 to 15 years in prison. It's not enough. Mm -mm. Or he can get the death penalty. And guess what he got? Death. Death. Yes. Death. He was uh, sentenced to death. Fired. They did hanging still in Japan in 1997. He had no remorse for his killings, and he was actually just fine in his comic book with his comic books in his cell for all these years. When they asked about the killings, he said that he thought he was a good, doing a good deed because these girls were playing in the park by themselves, and he thought they were lonely. Get out! So Get out of you here. know he's a lonely person, and he Bye. thought he was helping them. No. Bye. Thank I'm, you. I'm done with you. Um. So he, on June 17th, they came in and they gave him his last meal. And in Japan, that's tea and like this little dessert and a cigarette, I think is what it was. I don't mm. remember. Or a cigar or something. And a prison chaplain. And he refused the prison chaplain. So this is maybe the time that you could probably make things right. But he chose no, not to. He ain't gonna do so that. he was walked into the execution room. Where there was a big Buddhist statue there and a rope waiting for his ass. Yeah. So there's two rooms. There's the execution room in the room next door. There's these buttons, right? And there's three different people and everybody pushes the button at the same time so that you don't have on your conscience that you actually killed. Nobody knows which button actually opens the door. Oh, wow. So every you, the, everybody pushes at the same time. The trap door opens up, and he was hung, and his neck was snapped on sight. Damn. There's a prison doctor on the ladder, and he has his stethoscope, 
and declared him dead. And so at 45, so he, this started when he was 26, he killed for only one year. So he was on trial and death row the rest of that time. What? So at 845, he gone. Deuces. Yeah. Wow. With no remorse at the end. No. And what's crazy, he became Japan serial killer famous. He's had copycat killers since then. <gasps> oh, he has shit. had, when he was in jail, he had these women like throw in themselves. Oh, yeah, yeah, at him. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. But I can't understand that. Like Ted Bundy, like he was good looking. Like he was smart. Like I cannot people just I get cannot, like but not wrapped for this. around I mean we we we're, we're a little obsessed, right? I haven't written any letters, but if I wrote I've a letter I literally never even thought about like, oh, I'm gonna contact a murderer. Like Oh, I would contact Ed Kemper in a second. But not well, because he, I think he looks good, because I think he's brilliant. But, but no way he, would well, I want it. Yeah. Yeah. No way would and I want And he's six foot nine and he's so tall. He's giant. So there is Tiramisu Mayasaki, wow. better known as Sutomu mm-hmm. or the Otaku Killer. Okay. Well, that was a quickie. <laughs> or it was supposed to be a quickie. <laughs> it will eventually be a quickie. <laughs> Tune in next week. Yep. Caroline's turn again. Here we go. We don't know go. what she has. Don't know. But you'll probably love it. And go find us. Yeah, follow us, um, subscribe to us, and rate us. Five, and only five. There's only one number that exists, and that is a five, and so there's a star behind out. it. And we're at Instagram at Bloody Happy Hour, and we're at Twitter at Bloody Happy Hour, and we're on Facebook at Bloody Happy Hour Podcast. And if you have any awesome stories, guess what? You need to email us at bloodyhappyhour at gmail.com because why would you not? Why would you not? Don't you want to hear your own stories? Because we want to read them and tell them. See y'all next time. DTF, I mean, I mean, be down to find the murderer. And there you go. <laughs> there you go. Peace out, y'all. Later. Bye. This has been a Rogue Media Podcast.